Aida for dropping, making a friend drop her baby? A friend of mine who I've known for a few years somewhat recently had a baby. I was there a few months back when he was first born to help with some household things and just to hang out with her, but I hadn't seen her for a couple months because she was so busy. The last time we hung out, she asked me if I wanted to hold her son. I said no thank you. It's not that I don't like kids or anything like that, it's just holding a baby makes me incredibly uncomfortable. On top of having a phobia of vomit, it's a huge responsibility that I just don't want. Her son is about 8 months old now. I was visiting for her husband's birthday party and was glad to be able to catch up. We were having a conversation and she was holding her son when there was a loud bang from the kitchen. Someone had knocked over a pot full of food, but no one was hurt. My friend went to go help. She started to hand me her baby and I reminded her that I'm not comfortable with that. It all happened so fast. I started saying, oh, no, I'm not. And she essentially shoved her son against my chest. Instinctively, like when being handed something you don't want, my arms shot up. My friend let go, the baby fell. He was fine, thank God. He was wrapped in a heavy blanket since it's cold outside. But he cried, my friend absolutely lost it, and blamed me for dropping her baby. I didn't say anything at the time because I was just so shocked at what just happened. I just stood there and stuttered while she screamed and rocked him, and a crowd of other party guests formed. All I could keep saying was, I didn't drop him. I wasn't ready. I ran out of the party and went home. I feel absolutely awful for the situation, but in hindsight, I don't think I should blame myself. My friend let go of her baby before making sure he was secure. She's the one who dropped him. She's messaged me since, screaming about how her son is going to be brain damaged because of me, and I haven't responded yet. I don't know how to respond, since I don't really know if I'm at fault here. So, Aida? NTA, it is the job of the person handing the baby off to ensure the baby is secure before removing their hands. And spilled food isn't an emergency. She also chose a person who had expressly said, I do not want to hold the baby, to her instead of another options. As it was a party I'm guessing there was more than just you and her present. She's absolutely responsible and instead of placing the blame where it belongs she's shoving it off on you so she doesn't have to feel guilty. Tell her she overstepped your boundaries. You informed her before that you are not comfortable with holding babies. Thank god little man is okay but this is not your fault. As a mother I wouldn't push my child off on someone without asking. It's not like the house was on fire or something. She could have carried him with her. Please don't blame yourself. It was a miscommunication that resulted in the baby falling. He is okay which is a good thing. Your friend is in shock that her child was harmed in the process of her just dropping her kid on someone that she knows is uncomfortable holding babies. It's her fault for not ensuring the safety of her child. NTA. What kind of dunce basically tosses their baby at someone, who it seems has never even held a baby before, to go check on a spill? Either she's actually a complete idiot, or she's masking her own feelings of guilt and shame for acting like a complete idiot. But yeah, I wouldn't expect the friendship to survive this. If for no other reason then, she will probably never let it go. Any neurological issue this kid develops in the future, she'll probably blame you for. Parents always try to find a reason or explanation for health issues that are beyond their control because they need to make sense of the world, which is fine, that's a very human thing to do. But based on how this person reacted to this, don't be shocked if you're blamed for little Timmy struggling in math class in 10 years, or you get an angry call when little Jessica is diagnosed with a seizure disorder. Esh sorry but if you're an adult with a friend that has a baby you need to get over your aversion to holding a child. The kid is 8 months old, not 2 weeks old, apart from dropping them there isn't much you can do to accidentally hurt the kid. I would be so sad if I had a child and my close friend refused to even hold them for a second while I need to run out of the room. She shouldn't have pushed the kid on you, and she should have reacted better, but come on bro. You can't hold your friend's baby for long enough to set them down? The kid would be in your hands for like a few seconds just find a place to put them. What happens when there's an emergency and now she knows she can't count on you? 
You can't be surprised if she doesn't want to be friends with someone she can't trust around her kid. You're entitled to never hold a baby, but expecting your friends that are parents to be chill with that is unreasonable in my opinion. I ate for telling my sister she's responsible for her life and our parents owe her nothing? I, 42M, have a sister, Sarah, 33F. Growing up, our dad had his own small business and mom was an office manager. We lived a comfortable life but was not rich by any means. Our parents told us that they will pay for our four-year degree and grad school should we decide to go. They made it clear that the money is for school only and not just free money. They stressed that if we decide not to go to school, they're not giving us the money for a house or anything. They said they worked hard for their money so they're going to retire early and enjoy their lives together. Once they pass, we'll get whatever is left but we should expect nothing because they're really going to enjoy their lives. Does it sound harsh? Yes. Is it reasonable and fair? I think so. They were setting us up for life as adults and growing up. I saw how much they sacrificed for us. I truly believe they deserve to enjoy the last half of their lives as they see fit. I'm okay with receiving nothing. That is because I make a decent living as an electrical engineer with an MBA and my wife is an attorney. We're doing well. Sarah, on the other hand, is not doing so well. She didn't listen to my parents and decided she wanted to travel after HS and not go to college. She asked our parents to fund her traveling but they refused and told her she's 18 and can earn her own traveling money. She moved to the west coast and went NC for a while from all of us until about three years ago. She moved back into our lives but we're not close. About two years ago, she asked my parents for money to put down on a house because she's tired of renting but they refused. They said their offer to pay for a four-year degree and grad school still stands but they're not paying for anything else. She complained to me but I agreed with my parents and told her it's not too late to get a degree and a better paying job. She didn't like my answer and went LC. This brings us up to our current situation. Next year is a major anniversary for my grandparents who live in another country. My family and my parents are going there to celebrate along with family members from all over the world. This will be a huge family gathering with people from all over the world flying in and we're all excited to go. However, it's an expensive trip and it'll cost about $20,000 for my family, me, wife, two kids. Sarah is married with no kids but she can't afford to go so she asked our parents to pay for her and the husband to go. They again refused and said they'll still pay for her college at which point she blew up at them. She called me to complain about how they're living in a crappy apartment, driving barely working cars, and have no savings and our parents refuse to help. I told her she made choices in her life and she's responsible for it. I said our parents are incredibly generous to still offer to pay for her college and it's still not too late. She hung up and I think we're about to go back to NC. Ayeda for taking this stance? Definitely NTA. I freaking love your parents for setting boundaries and sticking with them. And good for you supporting your parents' decision and giving reasonable advice for your sister, although she might not want to hear it. NTA. She has been told multiple times what the deal is and still chooses to ask for money for other things. This may be harsh, but your sis blaming it all on them just proves the point that she is being entitled about it. If she had taken more ownership of her situation and not just ranted at all of you, I wonder if the parents would have at least been willing to help with the reunion trip. Hard to want to help someone that blames you for your poor choices. Life is not linear and not everyone wants or needs to go to college to succeed. On the other hand, it doesn't seem like she's trying. I'm not sure making your sister fit into a mold made of your parents will solve anything. But then again what is her ambition beyond her parents? I think you could be more compassionate than judgmental. NTA, we did the same thing for our daughters. They had four years to get a marketable degree at a private college. One daughter wanted to take off a year to snowboard. I told our that is her choice, but all tuition and college expenses were her responsibility if that happened. Your sister made her choices and continues to make poor choices. Your parents are extremely generous to still offer to pay for her college. 